drive sport luxury cars are my spirit animal. Not that I'm luxury or sporty or anything resembling compact. If I were as tight and as well handling as one of these cars, I'd die a happy man. So in 2013, when Cadillac announced that they were competing with Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and to a lesser extent Lexus in this category, people laughed. Laughed until they drove it. Now, underneath this car's angular exterior is the heart of a champion, and it represents one half of the 2016's improvements over last year. This car has a 333 horsepower V6 that adds cylinder deactivation to reduce fuel consumption over last year. Mated to that engine is an eight-speed automatic transmission that in this model includes paddle shifters that further connects driver to road. All those parts are bolted to a superb chassis that even Mercedes and BMW loyalists have to agree is pretty damn good. Let's start with the basics first. The ATS sedan gets the complement of all of Cadillac's engines available in this car. The sedan either gets a 2.5 liter four, two liter turbo, or like this, a 3.6 liter V6. Now, like I said before, this car manages 333 horsepower and 285 pounds-feet of torque, which is tops among the ATS, short of getting the hyper-performance ATS V, which makes unbelievable horsepower. But this is a completely different sedan. What makes the 3.6 so remarkable is the fact that it can shut off two of its cylinders while you're cruising on the highway to improve fuel economy. EPA estimates aren't out for this engine, but based on our returns and our driving, we've averaged about 26 miles per gallon in mixed driving. In a perfect world, all sport compact cars like this would come with six cylinder engines, but we don't live in a perfect world. And in the real world, the V6 costs $7,000 more than the two liter turbo and $9,000 more than the 2.5 liter base four. That may sound like a lot when you consider that the ATS-V with its mega horsepower costs 17 grand more than this car. This car becomes the sneaky performance pick and it's worth it. So how does it drive? The engine doesn't match the chassis and that's not a dig on the engine's performance at all. In reality, the 3.6 liter runs up to 60 miles an hour in about six seconds. And in rear wheel drive form, that can be a blast. But my goodness, does the ATS handle like a champion. One thing that this car does have is magnetic ride control, which I think is the cheapest car that GM will sell with that particular suspension setup. It's the same that they use in the Corvette and the Camaro, and it's the eighth wonder of the world. It's really awesome. It keeps the car super flat and cornering and makes this car a blast to drive, which again adds to the fact that this is kind of the sneaky performance version short of the ATS-V, which is stratospheric in its abilities. Soft bucket seats keep your rump in place and the interior is better than it used to be with a revised Q system. And the introduction of Apple's CarPlay represents the other half of the biggest improvements over last year's model. The interface mimics an iPhone's operating system and it makes anybody familiar with the smartphones instantly an expert on how to use Cadillac's system. The downside of having such a user-friendly interface here is the fact that the steering wheel controls don't necessarily match what's going on up here. The steering wheel controls can still be a little confusing and hard to manage if you don't really know what you're doing or for less than tech savvy people, which is a kind of a minor hit. The other minor annoyance that I have with this car is the same with a lot of cars this size. The, the rear seat isn't exactly spacious for <clears throat> growing boys like myself. It's really easy to say that the best ATS is the most expensive one. And it's what I'm gonna say here. I know, I know, I know, it's the coward's way out, but it's absolutely true. And it's also true for the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class as well. This actual car is $55,000 and it's fully decked with everything that you could ask for out of this car. The BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class are the same way. They get just as expensive. And believe me, that car is worth it. It's just as good. But as the new kid on the block, the Cadillac needs to not only be better, it needs to be cheaper. And you can spec a car to be less expensive, but is it better? It's almost there. Oh, that dude's just picking his nose. 
feel like I should probably pick my nose too. 